the Vampire Survivors DLC, the thing that I have been dumping my life into. So generally what happens is that when the Vampire Survivors new DLC, whenever they put out a new DLC, I hunker down for like two or three days at most and just unlock everything and have a grand old time. You know when MMO players take time off of work so that they can just grind the new expansion? That's me with Vampire Survivors. That's my little ritual. Uh, the Vampire Survivors DLC has to this point been uh, wonderful. I think they've all been really high quality. Uh, great value for the price. This game is so cheap. Every DLC is like 3 or $4. Um, uh, I thought that the last DLC, which was a uh, Operation Guns, which was the Contra crossover with Konami. You know, people made fun of the fact that it's a, cro it's a Konami crossover and it's not Castlevania. <laughs> Uh, but I really liked Operation Guns. I thought the new characters were cool. Uh, I really liked the new weapons that they added. The new stage was great. Uh, good time. And when you see that they're adding Castlevania characters, you're like, oh, this is sick. Cool. That makes so much sense. Um, so a couple things. I guess this is going to contain spoilers for the Ode to Castlevania DLC, if that's something you care about, because there are plenty of secrets in here. And like secret characters and stuff that I'm going to be talking about. So generally, I actually went and counted pretty much every DLC has added between 8 to 12 characters. Something like that. 8 to 12 characters, um, usually new weapons for each of them. Occasionally there will be, you know, you'll have maybe 8 characters and a couple secret characters to unlock. Ode to Castlevania adds eight e new characters it adds 80 new characters it i haven't i actually didn't do the counting i wouldn't be surprised if it single-handedly or nearly doubles the size of the rest of the game up to that point there are so many characters in this DLC. It blew me away. There are the initial characters that you that you see on the character select screen that you haven't been un un unlocked yet. Then you've got some of the um, hidden characters is what they're called, which are characters that you have to do specific um, tasks in the, like, it doesn't tell you like that you're going to you have to like either find them in the level or beat a specific boss or something like that. They're characters you have to do little um special challenges to unlock. And then there are secret characters. Secret characters are characters who um are they only give you clues when you hover over them in the character select as to how to unlock them. You they don't tell you in the um unlocks menu. Uh, and you don't unlock them just by, like, I would say, like, a, a normal, I don't know. Unlocking stuff in Vampire Survivors can sometimes be a little bit uh, abstract with, like, you got to unlock this, then unlock this. There's, like, a whole chain of things you have to unlock. <laughs> um, Essentially, okay, I guess I have to talk about the map if I'm going to talk about the unlocks. I don't know if it's the biggest map they've added, but it is probably the most detailed one. The new map, the new stage, um, Castlevania, or I think it might be called Ode to Castlevania, is outstanding. It is massive. And it has so many different areas. Um, like, you start out and genuinely just the section outside of the castle could be, like, all uh, basically half of a regular stage. <laughs> like the the it is so big and there's enough things around there's like two bosses in there uh it could be like half of a regular stage and then you go into the castle and there are 30 different bosses to fight that you spawn by walking over these specific little sigils on the ground at different uh locations um 
there are so many little areas. It the, the it is so big that there are teleporters. There's literally like Symphony of the Night styled teleporters around the castle to help you go from uh to help you get around it because genuinely I don't think that there is a way to see the entire stage in one run and actually survive. <laughs> like if you were to do that, you would literally have no time to farm, to farm levels at all. Uh, it is that massive. And you unlock the teleporters uh, by defeating certain bosses and venturing deeper and deeper and deeper into the castle. Um, so you do this whole, you do this whole, all this stuff, working your way through the castle up to like the clock tower and then at the top, it's like Castlevania. You ascend into Dracula's lair. And okay, I'm going to spoil this, but it's so much fun. I have to talk about it. If you care, if you care about like genuinely really cool stuff um, uh, in the game, then, then skip this if you haven't played it yet. The final unlock is the final character you unlock is Richter. Uh, that's just the way that that that's just the way that the uh the 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 progression works. The final character you unlock is Richter. When you take Richter and go all the way up to the throne room, sorry, when you go up to the top of the very tip top of the the clock tower and everything, for any other character, there's like really nothing there. When you go there with Vic, uh, Richter, there's this whole it's the it's the throne room. It's it's Dracula's throne room. That's in all the all the games, you know, um, famous for being the opening of Symphony of the Night, you go up to, to, to Dracula and there's some really fun stuff in this, uh, in this DLC where they, they turn the game 2D. They give you 2D movement where you're all of a sudden, instead of like being on an overhead view, uh, you are, your character is walking along like the bottom of whatever surface you're on. It's kind of neat. And you can like jump and stuff without ever having to actually change the perspective, there is like some funky, you know, they changed the the look of the, the perspective the background is drawn from, but that's it. So you go into the throne room and they reenact the opening of Symphony of the Night. Uh, and it's actually um, Richter. It's fully voice acted. It's like the first voice acting in the game. Uh, Richter, they have like the UI, like it's literally a recreation <laughs> of the famous opening. And it's actually Pro ZD doing the voice of Richter, which is really funny. Um, and they do the, oh, die, monster. You don't belong in this world. They're doing the whole thing. Uh, it's great. You fight Dracula. And then there's like this whole scene after you beat Dracula where uh, death shows up. And then you have to fight death. And it's like this gigantic scene where like all the other, as you're fighting death, all the other Castlevania characters that you've unlocked spawn in and you're all fighting them together and the music is going crazy. And it is so, it is, they're doing all this stuff with like, uh, the sort of vampire survivors, the very loose lore of the game is like, there's this, I don't know, there's this weird like hand thing. It's like this golden hand called the Dire Rector. And the director is like helping you out and like keeping you from dying. And these, it's so fucking cool. It is so much fun. It, I was smiling so much during it. Um, it was really sick. And then you beat death and then you get this great, uh, credit sequence. And dur and after the credit sequence, all of a sudden, boom, it pops back into like, a a cut scene and there's, brand new music it's all pumping and then just tons and tons of characters running by that you haven't seen yet and it's like actually dude there aren't because it always starts with there's like 20 characters you know there's like 40 additional characters to unlock and it's like holy shit all these guys are playable and then you get to i guess like the last part of the dlc which is unlocking all of the the secret characters or hidden characters. I forget how they again. I I forget the terminology. They are. They're kind of they're kind of similes. No, not similes. They're kind of. 
synonyms for each other. Secret and hidden. That's what I'm looking for. They're synonyms. They're cinnamons for each other. Um, and get this. Once you do that, there's another gigantic part of the map. On There's like four more areas that get unlocked and like 10, 15 more bosses. It is insane. It is so much to go through. Um, it's like the underground part of the, of the castle within through the caverns and the sewers and all that. Um, it's so good. It is, it is in terms of the content. Okay. So, in so first of all, the stage is immaculate. Um, it is so much effort. It's so cool. There's tons of little references and, and little secret areas and stuff. The variety in locations is just, just awesome. Uh, the new weapons that are added are great. Uh, I, I started to run into... There's a weird problem. It's not really a problem because you can control it. <coughs> um, that's weird. Is my throat dry? Uh, the um, That threw me off. So, every time they release a new DLC, they add a bunch of new weapons. Now, if you don't know, the way Vampire Survivors works is that you have weapons and you have like passive items. So the once you um, max out the level on a weapon, you can evolve it into a stronger form, like a super form of the weapon. <clears throat> but you need some kind of... Pre There's always a prerequisite of another item that you need to be holding. <clears throat> so uh, the whip is like the first weapon you start with. Once you max out the whip, you if you are holding the the hollow heart, which is an item that just gives you more max health, you can then go to a chest, and the chest will uh, give you the evolution for the whip, which is like this much stronger, it like steals health, does way more damage. Um, <clears throat> that's how it works. They always add new weapons. They rarely, if ever add new items i'm actually gonna look i'm actually gonna look um <laughs> excuse me i'm actually gonna i don't think like um i don't i don't know if they've added a single new passive item because i kind of get the the idea you know the idea is that, well, if there are too many items in the pool of upgrades, because you always get random selections, <clears throat> uh, it would become too hard to consistently be able to evolve things. So you can maybe pick up an item first and then pick a corresponding weapon that either synergizes with it or... Um, either synergizes with it or evolves with it. And, uh, yeah, I can't even find, like, <laughs> I'm on the wiki. So I get that, but you kind of now run into this other problem where, yeah, hang on. Okay. I'm looking at the list of items. These are all base game items. At least that were, you know, that were, let's say, released into uh, the 1.0 version of the game. Uh, this DLC adds two new passives, although they are only available, I think, on this stage and potentially out of... There's like an item that you can get that just lets you uh, uh, pick any passive item off of that, that, you, uh, that you've unlocked. Uh, the Tides of Foscari, the second DLC, added one item. Uh, the Emergency Meeting, which is the Among Us DLC, added actually quite a few, but I think they're also only available on certain characters. The Operation Guns added one, which is a generic. Uh, I don't even think it, it doesn't actually occupy a slot. <laughs> Um, it's just called the weapon upgrade. Yeah, so you end up with this kind of situation where the number of weapons in the game vastly outnumbers the number of 
items in the game. So when you're actually trying to put together a build and work with what you're given, I just keep getting weapons and I would really rather be getting items. Maybe it, it you know, they could adjust the numbers a little bit uh, on how many, how often items are recommended to you or, or are given to you. But like the, the, <laughs> It leads to, so the problem is that if all you do is invest in weapons, that's really not very, you need items. The items are basically what lets you capitalize on, because each, we, the items all increase your stats, different stats. And the weapons scale with different stats. So leveling up the weapons definitely makes them stronger, but it's that like half strength if it doesn't have items that really uh, synergize with what the weapon is good at. So you, there's just too many, there's too many weapons almost. Uh, thankfully, there is, so it, it genuinely becomes hard to build. It, it became hard to build because I just couldn't get anything consistently like solid going uh, with the items that I was not being given. Uh, thankfully, there is a whole system to alleviate this which is that you can just straight up take like anything out of the upgrade pool uh they're just called banishments or uh, sorry seals you can seal and banish so sealing is outside of the outside of a run uh you can just go to your unlocks and <clears throat> uh literally just click on like click down the list of what ones you don't want to show up you can even mass uh, seal an entire DLC <laughs> on the side. There's just, you can just check a box. Don't give me anything from this, you know? Don't give me anything from the fucking, uh, from the Among Us DLC or something like that. Uh, so that helps. That's definitely helpful and it helps alleviate this sort of, I don't know, natural problem that arises of there's just, there's just, in a, in a game where the upgrades are given to you randomly. There is, um, if you have a weapon, you are more likely to get an item that will evolve it uh, and vice versa. That is definitely a thing. It, it's notice a noticeable statistical bonus. Uh, and also any items that, anything that you've already um, bought will also be given to you more often as options. But uh in general, it's like, you know, you're, it's just, it's, it's just a roll of the dice, a roll of the slot machine. And it creates this kind of funky problem where it's, <laughs> I have to start, this is the first time in a DLC I felt the need to start sealing things away just because it was getting very difficult to manage an actual build. Uh, but that, that's kind of a suffering from success sort of problem. <laughs> Uh, I have not unlocked all of the secret characters yet. They are... Some of them have kind of terrible unlock requirements that are really annoying to do. Uh, some of them are fine. Uh, but in general, there's just there's just a lot. Like, they are very specific. And they basically only give you riddles to figure it out. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to the, I'm going to the wiki and just looking up what to do and... <laughs> To me, that's part of the fun. Vampire Survivors is a very, like, it's a lot about discovery and the communal aspect of the game is one of the one of the most fun parts of following it because people just have to figure stuff out when new things get added. People just have to figure it out. Um, yeah, I would say the, the Ode to Castlevania is having one... This is the only game I've ever 100%ed. Well... Sorry, it's not the only game, but it is the only one that I 100% every single time a new update comes out. Uh, knowing the ins and outs of this game, I would say that this is the this is the best DLC hands down. I don't even think there's a there's a question in terms of the sheer content, in terms of the quality of the content. I don't even talk about the uh, weapons. The weapons are really fun. Some of them, some of them I'm not super into. Um, some of them, it varies. So there's a ton of new whips, obviously. Some of the whips are meh. Some of them are fun. Uh, there's a whole series of new, like, spell books. And the spell books are kind of weird because they feel kind of awkward to use until you run them with the Gemini Arcana, in which case they get 
really good and way more fun. Uh, essentially, all of the spell books, they create these little seals and they'll cast some kind of spell out of the seal. And they all have different... You know, some of them fire just in front of you. Some of them fire in this kind of pattern around you. Some of them will lo lock onto enemies. Some of them will like rotate around the screen as you move and shoot inwards. And they all they all fire on like countdowns or on, on cooldowns. Uh, so the the they feel when I say they feel kind of awkward, it's like it's just sort of hard to hit a lot of stuff with them until you get the Gemini Arcana. So if anyone wasn't keeping up with like, I mean, Arcanas have been around in the game for a while. Um, Arcanas are these bonus effects that you can choose from. You can have by default up to three, although there are means by which you can have many more. Um, you can, th there, there are so many ways to like break the rules of the game essentially that it supports. Uh, the idea is that arcanas are like these cards that follow, you know, like the tarot arcana. And each one of them has a funky a new, like different effect that can complement a different kind of play style or build. So one of them is Gemini. Gemini gives what they call companions to uh, a select uh, a number of weapons. So, which is, is essentially weapons that are maybe a little bit linear. They get like a secondary, a, like add on to that. So in the case of these, the spell books, I mentioned how it'll create like a little seal and that's where the spell fires from. When you get Gemini, you also get another seal on the opposite side of you. So Ice Fang is, might, might be my favorite one. It just generates these like ice spikes in front of you uh, that hit multiple times and they kind of like crunch. It fires like like a, like a two rows of them, like uh, pointing upwards and pointing downwards and then they like crunch in on the enemies. Uh, that just shoots in one direction by default, but you can have them firing on both sides if you get Gemini. And so all the spell books are affected by that and oh my god, they get way better. They're really fun to use. Um, there's some fun like new projectile thing. The projectile weapons are really fun in the DLC. I like the bouncing, uh, the hooks. I like the cannonballs or the iron balls, sorry. They always cause like this massive screen shake whenever they drop. Uh, the <laughs> Dracula's weapon is a glass of wine that he throws because meme. <laughs> um it's funny i thought it was cute it's so clearly made there's so many characters i've never heard of there's references to just about every single castlevania game that's ever been made except lords of shadow <laughs> um there are tons of like little like you can play as like the flea man you can play as like the skeleton archers you can play as uh, like the shopkeeper or something like that. Like there's like a shopkeeper, what is he, the master librarian or something? There are so many characters that are just like deep poles or weird things that you would never expect, but that are, are so much fun to have around. Um, but yes, in general, I find the weapons to be very fun. Uh, I like building around them a lot and they have some cool evolutions. This is, yeah, this is definitely the best dlc that they've ever done um and to be honest i don't even care if they never top it because i think it's worth creating something this good <laughs> i think it's worth it um it definitely took a lot of work <laughs> this is a lot of work put into this it's probably why it took so long uh and and again the value for this is absolutely ridiculous let me look up let me look up actually how much this costs. So, okay. So, first of all, it's a $4 DLC. That's crazy. Um, so, first of all, the base game is... Show me the base game. The base game is $5. The first DLC is $2. The second DLC 
is two dollars the among us and contra dlcs are both 250 this one is four dollars do they sell like a complete package uh vampire survivors game plus all dlc plus ost uh that is in total Oh, okay. Well, I already own them, so it's, like, not telling me. <laughs> it's not telling me what the what the actual cost of the, the full thing is. The only thing I don't own is the soundtrack. That's so funny. Uh, Vampire Survivors. Oh, let, me go to the, let me go to the Steam. Store. I'm just, I'm, this is just turning into me selling you Vampire Survivors again. Again. Oh, no. I'm logged in on the Steam store. Way. Well, I, if I just do the basic math, it's like 5 plus 3. Or sorry, 5 plus 2 plus 2 plus 250 plus 250. So... For a whopping fourteen dollars, <laughs> you can get uh, what I have pulled. What am I sitting at? Two hundred and sixty-four point eight hours. Two hundred sixty-five hours. <laughs> Absolutely absurd amount of content. <laughs> um. Yeah, I would I would absolutely recommend it. It is one if you were gonna get any DLC for the game, if you just own the base game and you want to get any DLC, this is the one. It's so cheap. Do they even do regional pricing? Because the game is so cheap already. Like it, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I feel like I I I've, I've said it before, but like the 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 base game. They could have sold that thing for $10. And I think it would have been worth it. I think it would have been worth it. But uh, instead, it is just mad cheap. <laughs> I love I love Vampire Survivors so much. 